Welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. We'll be continuing the assets accounting part where the we have done in last was to determine the depreciation area in the asset class. Now today we'll be moving ahead with the configuration part. So uh, today we'll be doing depreciation and we'll see how the depreciation rules, depreciation keys and the calculation methods are done in asset accounting. So as a normal part, depreciation which is uh, known as the value of normal wear and tear for an asset. So the normal loss in the asset values in the course of usage or neon usage is termed as depreciation. It is called the value for normal wear and tear for an asset. The accounting treatment of depreciation in SAP is have different ways. First is direct depreciation and the second is indirect depreciation. Direct depreciation means showing the accumulated depreciation in the asset side of the balance sheet and accordingly reducing the asset value. Whereas in the indirect depreciation, the accumulated depreciation will be shown in the liability side of the balance sheet and the APC value will be intact. APC means the gross value of the asset will be intact. Now moving on to the SAP supports the following direct types of depreciation which is ordinary depreciation, spatial depreciation and unplanned depreciation. Ordinary depreciation means the planned reduction in the asset value due to the normal wear and tear which is normally been a percentage is defined as a part of normal ordinary depreciation. So if we explore more in it, normal depreciation means the normal depreciation in the course of routine applicable as normal. All the depreciation area will be considered as a normal depreciation type. So uh, the normal ordinary depreciation means the, the depreciation keys or the uh, particular uh, defined percentages of depreciation which has been defined for the assets which are taken as a normal depreciation. Whereas spatial depreciation is solely based on tax regulations. So it basically means the spatial depreciation required for spatial purposes or parallel valuations like tax depreciation, cost depreciation like. Whereas unplanned depreciation, depreciation resulting from unusual circumstances such as damage to an asset. So it basically refers to more of like unexpected events or unexpected losses. It could be due to change in the tax depreciation, due to spatial tax depreciation, due to maybe the book well, book depreciation areas or it could be due to sub certain normal calamities and all. So these are the different depreciation types which will be uh, available in the SAP system. Now moving on to the next is depreciation calculation method. So in SAP, by default, calculate and apply the book value, sorry, the book depreciation, any difference in between the book depreciation value and the other depreciation area will be placed in the spatial reserves. Okay, so uh, if we discuss more on to, so talking about depreciation calculation methods, the depreciation calculation method is the most important feature of internal calculation key. It is used to carry out different types of depreciation calculations. There are different calculation methods as you can see in the screen. Define base method, defining declining balance method. There is one more method which can be added to it is maximum amount method then defining multi-level methods and maintaining the period control methods. 
So we'll be discussing each one of them one by one so as to have a better understanding of that and even though these need to be configured into the system. So let's move to each of the calculation method one by one. Now moving to the first is the defining the base method. Now the base method primarily specifies the type of depreciation. The depreciation could be charged as per the ordinary or special depreciation. The depreciation method used in this case could be straight line method or the written down value method which is also known as reducing value method. The treatment of depreciation at the end of planned useful life of asset or when the net book value of the asset is zero. Now here we need to assign the base method to the depreciation key. Normally the me base method is supplied by SAP are sufficient and there is no need to create any new base method. So what we will be doing is we will be using the standard provided SAP base methods because there is no need to calculate any new uh, new, new to create any new base methods for calculations as these are sufficient enough for all type of calculations. So moving on to the SAP screen so as to define the base method in system we'll be moving to the SP arrow and now we'll be moving to the asset accounting. So first we need to go to the financial accounting new and then from here to the asset accounting part. So and in the asset accounting we'll move to depreciation. In depreciation we need to go to the valuation methods and in valuation method we need to go to depreciation key. So these all different calculation methods is basically a part of your de depreciation key. On the basis of these different methods one depreciation key is created and on the basis of that the depreciation is calculated on the assets. So the calculation method now we can see the base method is there. So we can execute the base method. So the path is simple. We first need to go to SPRO, then to IMG screen, then to financial accounting new, then to asset accounting, depreciation, valuation method, depreciation key, then calculation method, and then to defining the base methods. That's the path. The path, however, is mentioned over here to you. So executing the defined base method. So in this you can see that by standard system there are there are number of uh, different base methods have been defined in the system and we will be using the base method from here for our own calculations as well. Normally what we use is the 011 so that is the percentage from the useful life. So this is what we will be using in the system. We will not be creating any new base methods. All these standards will be used. We'll see that how these standard uh, base methods can be used later on when we will be creating a depreciation key. So now moving on, I hope you know the depreciation methods which are used like a straight line method and WDV method. A straight line method which is the simple method of depreciation it charges equal amount of depreciation each year over useful life of assets. In first, add up all the cost incurred to bring the asset in use and then it is divided by the useful life of the asset in the years so as to calculate the depreciation for the year. So that is the simplest way out of calculating the depreciation. Even you must have studied about it as uh, earlier in your books as well as in the practical part. And the written down value method basically involves applying the depreciation rate on the net book value of the asset. In this method depreciation of asset is done at a constant rate. In WDV method depreciation charges reduces every successive period because the net book value goes reducing. This method should be used in those assets where high depreciation should be charged in the initial years. So 
that is all about the base method now moving on to the next method is defining declining balance method so declining met balance method is nothing but the WDV method that we discussed earlier in the base method above in the WDV method is specified in the base method then the following additional settings in this method can be used that is if we move to the declining balance method over here and execute this now in this you will find these are the different settings have been provided to you so this is how the declining balance method is worked there is a multiple factor over here thus you can see by slash slash and slash so these are different percentages and these are the multiplication factor for determining the depreciation percentage rate the system multiplies the depreciation percentage rate resulting from the total useful life by these factor a lower limit for the rate of depreciation if can be fixed over here so in this part the minimum percentage can be set that is a lower limit for the rate of percentage is fixed if a lower depreciation percentage rate is produced from the useful life the multi application factor or the number of units to be depreciated then the system uses the minimum percentage rate is specified over here whereas on the upper limit for the depreciation rate is also there as a maximum percentage if a high depreciation percentage rate is produced from the useful life the multiplication factor or the number of unit to be depreciated then the system uses maximum percentage rate specified here so this is what is for depreciation uh, declining balance method so in this we can define the minimum back percentage as well as the maximum percentage for calculating the depreciation on the net book value so we'll see this in creating the depreciation key we don't have to do as of now anything in this moving back now we'll move to the next method calculation method that is the maximum amount method now in the maximum amount method generally if we use a straight line method then the depreciation amount should be the same for all the years but depreciation on asset is subject to change due to many factors for example any addition to the assets change in the estimate of useful life or change in estimate of scrap value and so so far so far maintaining the better control on the amount of depreciation sap has provided this method where we can specify the maximum amount that can be charged as a depreciation in a particular year if this is specified the user will not be able to post depreciation exceeding the amount specified here so if we look after to this particular step defining the maximum amount method we can move to the next calculation method that is executing the defined maximum amount method now in this you can have a look that here we can select this and we can go to maximum amount and we can define the maximum amount over here that could be put up as a part of maximum depreciation limit for a particular year so that is what can be done over here in this particular case but this is something which is very rarely used in any of the organization so this particular maximum amount is defined by the sap itself if you want you can create your own maximum amount method for calculating depreciation too where you limit the maximum amount of depreciation till which depreciation can be charged for that particular year moving to the next is defining the multiple level method now this multiple level method is very important method in asset accounting as the name itself suggest this method provides you the flexibility to specify 
different rate of depreciation for different years or different periods. Example, in some cases depreciation rate is required is different in the initial year and after that the rate should be changed. This can be achieved in SAP by using the multi-level method where you can assign the different percentages and later on the system will automatically charge depreciation as per that particular percentages. So in this method SAP provides us the possibility to specify different levels during the useful life of an asset. So if you want that there is an asset uh, whose life is 10 years and the rate of percentages are that in the initial year it should be charged at the rate of 20% and later after couple of years the rate should be changed from 20% to maybe 10% in that case we can customize the system in such a way that as the the uh, asset reaches that particular period or the year the system will automatically start charging the appreciation with a lower or the changed percentage rate so each level represent the period of validity of a certain percentage of depreciation so if you look to this particular part let's move to the screen in SAP and have a look of how this multi-level method works and this is something which is very important for in the industry so over here you can have a look that there are different methods over here 001002003 we'll discuss about that so in this percentage rate is then replaced by the next percentage so as said the percentage get replaced to the next percentage as the period of validity has expired so it also provides you the flexibility to to us to choose defined validity period which can begin with capitalization date or maybe the starting date of depreciation and all so let's move on suppose if you select any of them and you go to this levels here you can see that there are three different methods have been defined so these are different methods where you can find that 25%, 38% and then 37%. So it says that the this particular method 002 give you the option of charging different methods on depreciation. So when you go for this levels in this, you will find that there are different levels in it. So in this you can see that in the first year the rate of depreciation is 25% and later on in the second the rate is 38% so what matters is the base value so if you go for base value 01 it is uh, acquisition value so in the initial the acquisition value will be charged at the rate of 25% and later later on the value which is left at the later year will be charged at the rate of 38% and then in the third year it will be charged at 37% so respectively you can also put your uh, calculations of different multi-level depreci depreciating of an asset over here even it provides you the option of not only years but also the period so you can see over here there is a year and there is a period as well so suppose I want that uh, I have purchased a machine at the at uh, suppose fifty thousand dollars and now I want that the depreciation after one and a half years would change from 25 percent to 15 percent so what I will be doing in that case is I will be assigning the first row with the year as one and the period as six and I can assign over here the percentage as 25 percent and when I want in the second year I can go in the second year part and I can assign uh, the year as 2 and over here I can change the percentage from 25 to 15% in that case what will happen is that the system will start calculating depreciation after 1.6 year at the rate 15% so this is where it becomes very much helpful or even you can go for easier calculation okay let's try to customize one so that it will give you a better idea about it how it can be done 
so if you go for a new entry suppose and I want to create my own so what I will be doing is I will be putting the multi-level method suppose I, I give it as Z zero double Z and the method I will be giving is 25% then I will be making it 15% I will putting two multi-levels in that so my machine so we'll select the validity start as well so in this you can see that the validity start is when you can select that from when your depreciation should be charged so it be charged at the capitalization date or the start date or the ordinary date or the change over year which one so normally it is the capitalization date so I selected the capitalization date now we'll go to this levels and we will define the levels so to define the levels over here we need to go to new entries the year will be 19999 now acquisition year will be 19999 now over here suppose my my case is that I have purchased a $50,000 of machine and its total life is around 5 years and at the initial two and a half years I will be charging depreciation at the rate of suppose 25 percent and after two and a half years I want the depreciation should be changed from 25 percent to 15 percent so how will, will I be customizing so that I don't have to remember after two and a half years that uh, for this particular machine the rate of depreciation has to be changed from 25 to 15 percent so how that kind of a particular case or scenario can be customized in this particular part so for that what we will be doing is we'll be defining the year and the period over here so for the year is 2 and the period will be 6 so the first two and a half years that is 2 years and 6 months the base value will be 0 1 that is the acquisition value the depreciation will be charged at the rate of 25 percent and then moving to the next that is after two years six months that is from seventh period the depreciation will be charged at the rate 15 percent so what the system will do that after two years and six months from two years seventh months the system will start calculating depreciation at the rate of 15 percent So this is how you need to customize your system as well. The period will be 9999, not 1999. It will be 9999. The year will be this and the percentage will be 25. So this is how you need to customize your multi-level method. However, there are number of multi-level methods defined by the system and that can even be used over here. So this is one of the scenario how we can customize our multi-level methods in this. So this is how you would be using this multi-level method as well and we'll see how this will be working in later years and in case you don't want multi-level in that case we can use the 001 where there will not be any multi-levels in it there will be only one level of depreciation calculation so this is a very important method because this is very much used and we need to define this whenever we'll be creating any depreciation key in the system now moving on to the next calculation method is maintaining the period control method again this is one of the another most relevant method keep control on the calculation of depreciation here we mention the different rules for periods in case of different scenarios for assets this method controls the period for which depreciation is calculated on an asset during the year under this method we can specify the period for which depreciation should be calculated in case of acquisition or subsequent acquisitions retirements or scrap sales or transfer upward or downward revaluations and all 
so what happen in normal scenarios from country to country in such cases the rules vary in case you purchase an asset before 15th of the month the full month depreciation will be charged in case you have purchased after 15th only 15 days depreciation will be charged or maybe in certain countries the rules are that no depreciation will be charged in that particular period and from the next period a depreciation will be calculated in that particular acquisition of asset similarly for the retirement and scrap in the period in which the retirement or scrap took place how the depreciation should be calculated so again for that there are different rules or laws as per different accounting principles or different regulations from country to country in certain cases there should not be any depreciation on retirement or scrap value for that particular period in which it has been retired or scrapped certain laws or regulations says that their depreciation need to be charged so how we will be taking that that will is another case which will be taken up in this certain law says that whenever any acquisition is done for asset the depreciation should be started from the starting date or from the first of the fiscal year so there are different way outs of this which is why the period control becomes very very important in this case so if we go for this particular step configuration step for period control method now moving over here you can see there are different period methods defined over here and each has its own rules of calculating so you can see over here the first this 0101020202 refers to these four columns which have been assigned over here the first column refers to the acquisition so if any any period control is starting with 01 or 03 or 06 has its own understanding so if you go to this acquisition part 01 means the pro rata at the period start date that means in case of acquisition if you have taken the 01 over here in this tab as 01 that means the depreciation will be calculated at the period start date that means if you have purchased it in the month of suppose 22nd of december the depreciation will start from 1st of december and in case if you take 02 the depreciation will start from the mid period at the period start date so similarly all of these have different methods if you take 07 it will be start at the mid year or at the mid quarter or next month so accordingly different periods are there for acquisitions second column is for subsequent acquisitions so if any case you purchase any additional asset in the same asset number then how the additional asset will be charged depreciation with is taken in the second column over here similarly the retirement is taken in the third column and the transfer is taken up in the fourth column so this is how this four column is very important for defining the rule for depreciation so right now what we will be doing is we'll be using these period controls which are over here as a as a standard function for our customization but once you are able to understand these period controls you can even go for creating your own period control as well when you get certain expertise in it so now these are the five different way outs for calculating depreciations which we have just went through the first is the base method the second is the declining balance method third is the maximum amount method fourth is the multi level methods and the fifth is the period control method so this is the depreciation in sap is calculated on the basis of these methods only now moving next to this r is now maintaining the depreciation key so once you have got all the knowledge of all different depreciation calculation methods then only 
you can assign the depreciation calculation methods to the depreciation key now moving on to the next that is depreciation key depreciation key contains all the control data for calculating or calculation of planned annual depreciation depreciation key also known as the valuation key controls the valuation of assets in the particular depreciation area it basically contains the calculation method which is a combination of the following one is period for which depreciation is charged method of depreciation scrap value if any planned change in method of depreciation so we need to put these all details in a depreciation key so as to create a depreciation key so that depreciation can be calculated as per the requirement so now if we move to the screen over here for creating a depreciation key we need to move over here in this particular tab the path is provided to you and it is over here now we need to go over here to maintain the depreciation key part and we need to execute this over here so when we execute it you can see there are different depreciation keys are already defined but now we will be creating our own depreciation key because you should know how a depreciation key is calculated this is where we define the percentage of depreciation how the percentage will be calculated on the values of the assets so we go to the new entries and if you go to the new entries over here you will be creating your your depreciation key so you need to give the depreciation key over here which can have a maximum of four character it can be alpha it can be alpha numeric so we define the depreciation key over here now uh, that is suppose i take it as a012 depreciation key at the rate 12 percentage so i want to charge depreciation at the rate of 12 percent so i will be creating one depreciation key at the rate of 12 percent now i would be going to this maximum amount and we can go and we can search out of it so the maximum amount for base value i don't need this because i don't want to put any maximum cap for depreciation which can create problem in the later years we can go for cut off value key and can search with that as well over here so i don't need any cut off value as well cut off value basically refers to the scrap value if you want anything to be maintained in this so now the what we need is to depreciation to to the date if you want depreciation to be calculated month to month in that case we don't need to select this but in case you need depreciation to be calculated at day to day basis then we need to select this depreciation to day over here so once we have defined the depreciation key and the description over here and we have marked the depreciation to day if you need day to day depreciation calculation as well by the system else you can leave it as well so in that case the system will calculate monthly depreciation uh, for that particular key and for that particular asset so once this has been done you need to go to this asset for of calculation methods and double click onto the as assignment of, of calculation method so once we move over here to assignment of mul calculation method we need to go to new entries and in new entries we will be defining the different heads
will be taking the straight line method in case you want to follow for the declining balance method you can even select the declining balance method as well now we need to go to the change method in change method change method is used in case you want to change the method from one method to the another method so over here I don't want any change of method so I would be selecting no automatic changeover then the, if you want the changeover you need to select the rate over here you need to specify the rate which will be changed accordingly now moving to the next is multi shift so is there any multi shift no there will not be a multi shift at all so no effect on the depreciation in the useful life so we will be selecting the increase in depreciation and expired useful life over here and now moving to the scrap value do you have any scrap value in that particular asset if you want to maintain certain scrap value you can select that one over here else we can ignore the cutover value so the cutover value is, is ignored cutover value refers to the scrap value over here now moving to the next is shutdown so the shutdown will be yes so this is how you need to fill all these details relating to the percentage calculations of depreciation so it is the depreciation type which is ordinary depreciation the phase is from the start of depreciation the base method is 0012 the period control is 001 the multi-level method is ZZ then the class is a straight line method the change method is no rem automatic changeover will be there multiple shift is increase in depreciation and expired useful life scrap value is cut off value is ignored so these are the different things which you need to take while creating a depreciation key so once you have taken these all you can go and you can save this screen over here and you can go for ok so your depreciation key is now ready to use as per the customization being done so this is how you would be creating your depreciation key and this depreciation key is the one which has been assigned in the asset master which will be creating later on so this is how the depreciation key has been created but yet it has to be activated otherwise you cannot use the depreciation so we can go to this activation key over here so once we click on to the activate the depreciation key will become active and will be useful for calculating depreciation so we'll go for activate okay and now it has been activated you can see the activation key over here has been uh, hidden so that means the depreciation key is become active now now we can move on so as we have created the depreciation key for 12 percent at for straight line method now we'll be creating one for WDV method as well so for creating the WDV method first we need to create one multi-level method as well which need to be assigned in that so for that we would be moving to multi-level method first now I will be creating a depreciation key for WDV method on plant and machinery at 15% per percentage per annum so for that I would be moving to new entries here I will be taking ZPM that is Z plant and machinery or in fact I can take it as Z15 which will make me understand that it is for 15 percentage so it is now depreciation WDV at the rate 15 percent the start date will be from capitalization date and then we need to go to these levels double click on to the levels 
now the screen over here is blank as you can see now I need to go to the new entries the acquisition year will be 9999 so that it can be used until it can be used can be continued now moving on to the years so the years which will be taking is 99 so that this particular method can be used for any number of uh, assets the base value now will be let's check the base value which will be taking over here is the net book value as you can check because now under WDV method the depreciation will be calculated on the net book value so that is why we will be taking 24 the base method 24 for depreciation calculations so double click on it and the base method has been taken over here now the percentage we need to define the percentage is 15 which we will be taking over here so once this has been done we can go and we can save the entry so the multi-level method for WDV at the rate 15% have been defined now we can go and we can create depreciation key because depreciation key includes the multi-level method in that without multi-level method we cannot create a depreciation key in that so now we will be moving to the multi-level method sorry to the depreciation key so we'll go to the maintain depreciation key over here and now we'll be creating a depreciation key as well so the depreciation key I will be creating over here will be again Z15 as 15 percentage depreciation key will be 15 percent WDV method 15 percent now moving to the next is we need to go for assignment of calculation methods so we need to go over here and have to double click on to this so once we double click it takes you to the second screen where we need to fill the other details related to the depreciation key so we need to go to the new entries and in new entries you need to define the depreciation type so the depreciation type will always be ordinary depreciation the phase from when you want to charge the depreciation will it be start of depreciation change over within the planned life or what so it will be from the start of depreciation the base method so the base method can be selected from over here now the base method over here will be Fourteen ordinary explicit percentage after end of life so double click to it now we'll go for the period control now moving on to the period control the period control will be 001 which says that the depreciation will be calculated from the cal capitalization date but in case of retirement no depreciation will be calculated in the month in which the asset is retired so we have taken the period control now we'll go for multi-level method and again we can search that multi-level method over here so the multi-level method which we defined just uh, a while back was Z1515 as depreciation WDV at the rate 15% so that is what we can select over here Z15 now we need to select the class so it is now the declining balance method which we need to select over here because we are going for WDV method change of method no automatic changeover is there the multiple shift will be increase in depreciation and expired useful life scrap value scrap value is ignored shutdown is yes 
So this is what you need to select all over here as a customization for depreciation key and the depreciation key for WDV will be created. So now we can save it. So the depreciation key has been defined now that is Z15 as we have just checked. So that is over here has been defined. So once we have done with the depreciation key, now we can move to the next part. So now the key business processes in asset accounting. The first is assets acquisition where asset can be acquired with two different way outs. The first is purchase from MM department. So and the second one is direct purchase by the finance department. So if we move to the first part that is purchase from MM department in that case the whole process of MM is followed where a purchase order is created then uh, the goods the the asset has been delivered by the vendor and once the asset has been delivered then the invoice is booked in the system and accordingly the asset is booked so that is one of the process the second process is direct purchases where there is no PO involved the finance and the accounts department directly purchases the asset and the payment is processed from the finance department itself the another process which we will be doing is assets retire. So earlier than asset retirement it is asset transfer where the asset are transferred from one particular place to another place. It may be one plant to another plant, one business area to another business area. So that particular process of transferring asset from one to another is been is will will be done in this part the next is asset retirement so there are different kind of retirements the one could be sale to customer the another could be sale without customer and then the next could be scrap of asset so the one is sale of asset sale to customer which means that you will be selling it to one of the customer from whom the payment will be realized later on by the customer. The second is sale without customer which means that there is no customer involved but you are selling those goods on cash or maybe on uh, in through bank. The another part is scrap of assets. So the, when the asset has got no value it's become useless then it goes for scrap of asset. So for go going for these different processes we'll move to the unit testing part and the unit testing involve creating the asset master then we'll go for the different processes to be done. So you need to take care that whenever we want any of the processes to be followed the one more important part is to create the asset master. So now first we'll be creating the asset master with AS01. So let's move on to create the asset master over here. Slash and AS01 enter. So for creating the asset master you should know your company code that is 1200 and you should know your asset class in which you will be creating your assets. So asset class means the asset block in which block you want to create the asset. So for that we need to go to the look for the options the asset class options over here. So the asset class which we have defined was land, building, plant, machinery, vehicle and all. So now what I will be doing is I will be creating an asset master in the plant and machinery asset class. So once you have selected the asset class, the company code and the number of similar asset will be 1. Enter. Once you enter it takes you to the second screen now. Over here you can define the description of the asset. So the description of the asset could be machine for uh, 
or it can be so we'll be creating the planted machinery suppose the machine is motor and we can put the quantity over here and then we can move ahead which we feel that need to be filled you can put the capitalization date as well over here when it will be capitalized so accordingly the depreciation will be calculated on that as well or else you can leave it blank as well so whenever you will be doing the first transaction in this asset that particular transaction date will be taken as the capitalization date moving to the next is time dependent so over here it asks us for the unit you cannot take the unit okay we can move to the time dependent so over here we need to select the business area cost center so right now we can see that the cost center over here is mandatory but right now we have not implemented the controlling module yet so we cannot def put the cost center over here so what we can do without cost center we cannot create an asset master so the second thing which we can do is we can make this cost center from required field to optional field so how can we go for creating this cost center as an as a optional field so that it allow us to pass without taking the cost center so let's move to make this cost center field as an optional field so for that we need to go to spro SAP reference IMG we need to go to the financial accounting new asset accounting now in asset accounting we need to go to the master data because we want to make changes in the fields of the master data we want the fields of master data to be required optional or suppressed so in this we need to go to over here and in that we will go to a screen layout so in the screen layout now I want to change the master data asset master data so I need to go to this execute and in this I need to define I don't have to create the rules I have to define the screen layout so I will double click on that double click on define the screen layout for asset master data so it will take you to the next screen in this you need to search your respective asset that is asset class that is the plant and machinery part which we are uh, just uh, creating the asset in which the cost center was mandatory so you need to select this plant and machinery over here and then you can go to filled group rules so when you double click onto the filled group rules okay it even has uh, so you need to select this plant and machinery and you need to go first to the logical filled groups so double click on to the logical field groups first then now out of that there are different fields over here there are different log on outs so how we can make this changes so if you move to the screen that is the to create AS01 asset master data which we were just been doing enter so you can see there are different options over here general time dependent allocation origin insurance depreciation area so in which of these tabs you want to make changes in the fields so that is what is over here in the screen so I want to make the changes in the field time dependent because I want to change the cost center in that so once I go to this time dependent the screen you can see this cost center over here is mandatory so I need to go to the time dependent and then I will get the cost center in time dependent so I will be selecting this time dependent data over here and go to the field group rules double click on it and now over here you can see this cost center cost center over here has been made required required means it's a mandatory field which you need to fill so what I will be doing is I will be making it optional field 
so that it will not ask the cost center as a mandatory part and we can proceed creating the asset master so this is you can see there are different other fields as well some of them are optional some of them are suppressed as well and as of now none of them are as a mandatory part in this so we can save the screen over here and the cost center has been changed from required field to optional field so now we can go to the next tab now we need to execute the transaction again so now we need to select the asset class over here in which asset class we want to create the asset so now we'll be selecting the asset class for the same plant and machinery so that is over here 9300 so you need to select the asset class then the company code and the number of similar asset once you have taken these three fields you can enter it will take you to the next screen over here you need to define the description over here for which asset you will be creating so suppose I am creating a new asset under the head planted machinery the asset class of that is 9300 the company code is 1200 and the description of that is suppose I purchase a generator so for gen purchasing generator and booking that in the system we need to create an asset for generator under the head plant and machinery so the description of that will be suppose generator with description over here now moving to the next we can fill the quantity over here as well that how much quantity we have purchased if it is one one can be taken over here so you put the unit of measure over here as well which is not available so you can leave the quantity as of now now moving to the next is you can put the capitalization date over here suppose I purchase this particular machine that is the generator on 1st of 1-6-2014 that is 1st of June or maybe 1st of September so that is what the capitalization date you need to fill it over here in which date you want to capitalize your asset now once you have filled these things you can go to the time dependent option in the time dependent part you can select your business area if you have any business area you can select it else you can leave it blank so now the business area which I would be using is suppose is 1210 and in case you have any other field over here which you want to fill as a detail you can fill those things over here as well so I don't have anything else right now to fill in this you don't have to do any anything in the allocation or the so if you move to the allocations over here the allocations can be put over here but that is not for your usage that is used basically in case of investment management now moving to the next tab is origin so in the origin tab we can fill the detail related to the vendor from whom we have purchased so over here we can assign the vendor number and the name of the vendor even we can assign the manufacturer name over here as well that the generator has been manufactured by which company it may be the manufacturer could be somebody else but the vendor who is selling that particular generator would be different so if it is a new asset you can tick that mark over here and if it is a purchased and used then you can mark this if the what is the country of origin even that can be marked even if uh, the particular machine is been used in some uh, it has been built up or manufactured in some other country so that country can be marked over here similarly if it is an original asset the asset number can be marked in it and if it is an in-house production the in-house production details can be put in this particular tab so it gives you the origin details that how that particular asset has been origined and from whom you have purchased that within the company so it can give you the details related to that and now moving on to the insurance tab 
in case you have but you have got the asset insured so you can put the insurance options over here so that what kind of insurance you have who is the insurance company what is the agreement number what is the insurance start date what is the insurance rates so these are the different things which can even fill and moving to the next most important tab now is depreciation area so whenever you purchase any asset any fixed assets every fixed asset is subject to certain amount of percentages of depreciation to be charged depending upon its usage so that for every percentage which we will be charged a depreciation key is created is defined so even in the earlier configuration steps we defined the depreciation key for the straight line as well as for WDB method similarly for different percentages different depreciation keys are defined in the system or if not defined you need to define those depreciation keys in the system so suppose the depreciation key we move and we can search for that so and there are different depreciation keys already defined but we will be using those which have been defined by us so the one which we have defined was A012 that is depreciation key at the rate 12% and the another we have created earlier was Z15 depreciation key WDV method at the rate 15% so suppose I take this depreciation key over here as Z15 and in case the same depreciation rate is charged for the second depreciation area you can even take that one over here as well you can take the useful life of the asset as well suppose I take the useful life of this generator is 10 years and I can mark over here as 10 years because every asset has its own useful life and that useful life need to be defined over here so this is these are the details which you need to fill up over here so these are the things every field over here is optional the things which are mandatory are depreciation keys the description and all so you can now go and you can save this screen over here and your depreciation and your asset master will be created so once I click on to the save option over here you can see the message have been generated that the asset 300001 is created similarly you will be creating the asset so once the asset has been created with the transaction AS01 you can now move to make changes in the asset master so once an asset master is created and now I want to make certain changes in them or later on I want to update my asset master with the vendor name manufacturer or other details or I want to put the plant number because I was not aware earlier now I came to know with which plant that particular asset belongs to so you can update those details in the asset master with the transaction code AS02 so moving to the transaction slash in AS02 enter now over here you need to select the asset number first for which you want the changes to be done so you need to go to the search option so these are the number of assets which have been defined in the system as of now just four assets have been defined so I want to make the changes in the generator asset which we just created so double click on it and it will be selected so once this has been selected you need to assign the company code as well over here and then you can click on to the enter and it will take you to the next screen so over here you can find the details related to the asset that is generator and if case you want to make certain changes in this you can even make the changes to the asset master so I don't want to make any changes to the general tab I can move to the time dependent tab as well now if there is any changes to be done you can look and you can do the changes and suppose I go to origin and I, I want to take the vendor over here so even you can go and you can select the vendor over here as well from the list of vendors available to you so these are the different vendors so whichever you want to take you can select 
and you can take it over here so you can see that the vendor number has been taken over here and the vendor name has been updated automatically similarly if the country of origin if the that particular generator has been purchased has been manufactured in a different origin country or if it, it is within the same country you can assign that country to it suppose I assign that United States as a country of origin so similarly you can also assign the things so you can see that these different fields are in the editable part but these are not mandatory these are optional fields if you have the details related to these you can use it you can fill those details otherwise you can leave it blank so these are the changes which I have done now I can go and I can save this screen so you can see the asset 300001 is changed so the changes have taken place in it so once I have created I have changed the asset master with the informations which I had and I want to make changes to it now similarly we can go and we can display the asset master with the transaction code AS03 so now I can go to the transactions lesson AS03 enter and now you need to select the asset number over here which you want to display so suppose I go and I can select the asset now I take a different asset over here suppose I take motor and if I want to see the details related to, to this asset I can click on to the enter so you can see the details over here that it is a motor and the asset class of that is 9300 the capital you can drag it over here downside so you can see the capitalization date of the asset is 1-6-2014 if you want to see the time dependent data you can even see the time dependent related data if you want to see the depreciation areas you can go and you can see the depreciation area the depreciation key over here is A012 so this is how you can display the asset master of any assets moving back so similarly you can create more assets masters for different asset, cl asset class so suppose I move to a new asset let's create one more asset master the transaction is 01 enter so I can go to the asset class so now I have the asset class over here suppose I create it in the vehicle enter so over here I can define now the description of the vehicle suppose the vehicle is Land Rover even if you want you can put the quantity if you want you can put the text over here as well you can put the capitalization date suppose I purchased it in this particular month beginning of this month so I can take the the beginning of the one that is 1st of December 2014 as the capitalization date so I now I can move to the time dependent tab so again the, the cost center over here is mandatory so I need to take this cost center off so let me take this off Asset accounting master data. Okay. 
so need to execute the transaction again land rover so over here you can put the quantity over here as well suppose we have purchased one land rover so that quantity over here number can be put up over here as it the capitalization date 1st of October now we can move to the time dependent data and we can select the business area then we can move to the depreciation area and we can assign the depreciation over here suppose I take the depreciation key as that 15 and the useful life as 10 years so what is important when creating any asset master is the general tab time dependent tab and the depreciation area tab these are the most three important tabs in asset master which is used extensively in any any organization so now you can save it and our asset is created now we can see in the footnote so now again you want to see you want to display you can go to the transaction AS03 enter and you can now enter on the screen and you can see the description of the asset is Land Rover the asset class it belongs to is 9400 the account determination is 9400 that is vehicle and the quantity purchased is 1 the capitalization date is 1-12-2014 the time dependent is business area over here is 1210 and the depreciation area detail is related is in the field of depreciation area so these are the different things which we can look for in these details so that is the how the asset master can be created so this is what we are done with the first unit testing step that is creating the asset master so for the next of the testing of processes we'll be doing it in the next training session till then you can do all this customization and configurations and brush up your things and make it very much clear all these configuration steps so see you in the next training session till then thank you take care